Hi, I'm Kat Bordy, and um, I'm going to walk you through part of the Little Sky, Little Learning Sock that is on page 12 of my new book, New Pathways for Sock Netters, book one. I'm going to assume that you have gotten actually to page 13, um, and we're looking at the Sky Arch Expansion. At this point, I have completed the Sky Arch Expansion. Down near the bottom of that text section on page 13, it says work a partial round one, stopping at the end of the instep. Well, this is your instep needle right here. I have it on two circles, by the way. This is the instep right here, and this is the sole. So we have knit to the end of the instep. The yarn now wants to go to the sole needle. Okay, let's look at how this looks. Get it folded so it begins to look like a sock. I have not done the ribbing that you have done, by the way, because I wanted to just get this ready to film. Okay, so the, this is the, the arches out here. The, we're going to do a heel turn here, and we're going to go in this area and then head out to the end of the foot. The toe will be up there. So that's where we're headed. I'm doing this on two circular needles, but I will stop and put it on two on, excuse me, on a set of five double pointed needles so you can see how that works as well. Okay, so we have, let's just review where we are, panel three, let's see, make sure everything matches up. If you look at the picture in panel three of the two cirques, you will see there are five stitches before A, then there are 15 stitches here, then we come to B and there are five stitches after B, okay? On the sole needle, we have 12 stitches, just like in the picture right there. Okay, if you are on double pointed needles, I won't move it on there right now, I will just talk about that. You have five before A, then you have eight out of the 15 on this needle, so this would be in one um, double pointed needle, and you have the seven before B and the five after B on the second double pointed needle. You have, instead of all 12 sole stitches on one circular, you have half them on each on a double pointed needle. So there'd be six on double pointed needle number three and six on double pointed needle number four. That is the picture you see on the bottom left in panel three if you're on double pointed needles. Now if you're on double pointed needles, you need to put all your sole stitches on one needle. See how to the left the picture has two needles and there's six on each, put all 12 on one as shown. And that will be your starting needle. Now your starting needle is the one that is going to be feeding stitches to the left, excuse me, to the right tip. Your starting needle, and I talk about this in another little video, your starting needle is always a red in my schematics, and it is like a UPS truck needle. It is delivering loops for the needle in your right hand to manufacture into stitches, okay? So that's the starting needle, and this needle that comes along and works along the starting needle, the starting needle gets us started because it has the loops that we need to knit into stitches. Okay, so we're going to be going along the sole needle in just a moment. Okay, I'd like you to turn to page 14, the next page, where it says heel turn. We're going to be working the heel turn back and forth just on the sole needle. We will not be touching any of the instep stitches until we're all done with the heel and even the back of the heel. So let's get rid of it, not actually take it out, but let's see how I'm sticking the ends down inside the sock. Get out of my way now. Isn't that nice? One of the advantages of circular needles is often you can get all the other points out of the way and you never have more than four points to deal with to begin with. Okay, now if you're on double pointed needles, these are all on one needle and you would have the fifth needle to be working back and forth. You would have all this on two other double pointed needles. Okay, so here's what we do. We're in row one. We're going to knit 10 stitches. One, two, three, 10. Okay. Now there are two left. I'm going to wrap and turn this second to the last stitch right here. Now watch this. First I'm going to wrap it, then I'm going to turn around. We're doing short rows. This is not a short row heel. This is a heel turn which requires short rows. Okay, the first thing you do is you bring the yarn 
from where it is to the other side. For knitting, we're in the back, so we move it to the front. Now I want you to slip this knit stitch knitwise. In other words, go into it as if though you were knitting it. Slip it onto the right needle. Move the yarn back to where it was. And slide that slip stitch back to the left tip as if though it's moving across the clothesline. Just put the tips together and slide it over. That way, You've changed the mount so it lies like this on the needle, it will stay that way. Notice it now has a yellow collar or necklace. Then turn. That was a wrap and turn. Now we're on row two. I'm going to knit until there are only two stitches left on this needle. Okay, only two stitches left on the purl side. Just like we went to if there were two on the other side. We're doing everything symmetrically. Same thing, we're going to wrap and turn. In this case, Purling, the yarn is in the front, so you move it to the other side, which is the back. I want you to slip the purl stitch purl-wise. Easy to remember. Slip the knit stitch knit-wise, slip the purl stitch purl-wise. Slip it off, move the yarn back to where it was in the front, and put those needles tip to tip, and slide that stitch back across like a clothesline, and turn. That is a wrap and turn for a purl. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to knit until one stitch before that first wrap stitch on this side, which means there will be three stitches left on this needle. And watch, there we are. Okay, now we're going to wrap and turn that one. Tell yourself what we're going to do before I tell you. That way you'll learn better. Move the yarn where? To the other side. Slip the knit stitch how? Knit once. Slip it off. Move the yarn where? Back to where it was. And put that stitch back on like a clothesline and turn. Just wrapped and turned that. I'll bet you know what we're going to do next, even if you don't look at the book, because we're being symmetrical. We're going until there are three stitches left on the purl side on this needle. Now notice we're knitting in the middle of this needle more and more. That means the middle is going to build up. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, first thing, tell yourself what we're going to do before I tell you. Move the yarn where to the other side, slip the purl stitch how, purl wise. Move the yarn back, slip the stitch back tip to tip, which is also purl-wise. Back to the needle like a clothesline and turn. Okay, one more set of wrapped stitches. One on each side. I'm going to put them in front of the two that are wrapped already. Okay, these ones are getting different colors, which makes it really easy to see. I'm not even, well, no, I will tell you. Okay, move it to the front, slip the knit stitch knit-wise, move the yarn to the back. Put the stitch back like a clothesline and turn around. And now we're going to go until there are four stitches left and place our last wrapped purl there. Five left. Okay. So move it to the other side, slip the purlwise, move the yarn back, put it back like a clothesline and turn around. Let's look and see what we've got. Right here on this end we have one stitch that's not wrapped and one, two, three consecutive wrapped stitches. In the middle, we have four that are not wrapped. And on this side, we have an unwrapped one and one, two, three consecutive wrapped ones. Very symmetrical, and we've built up the middle. You can see already how it's getting taller in the middle. Now we are on row um, seven already, my goodness. We knit four, one, two, three, four. And now I'm going to teach you how to conceal wraps. 